guys are great. You're a little far away. All right, you're live. And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Science Saturday. We are always so excited for Science Saturday, but we are specifically excited this month because this week was World Ocean Day. Everybody celebrate, we love our ocean. June 8th was World Oceans Day. And to celebrate today, we are trying to find out all of the amazing things that you can see in the ocean right at the tips of your toes. So right now we are at the University of the Virgin Islands and we are sitting on the deck of one of their research vessels with permission. Uh, we're not going to be taking the boat out today, we're just using this as a platform. Uh, we found out from the dive team that there aren't going to be any boats out in the water, so we are taking advantage and we are going to be finding all of the amazing things just right here within 50 feet of the dock. Now, you guys know our Science Saturday intern, Mason. Hey yo! And today we are joined by um, special visiting Science Saturday intern Kendrick. Hey Kendrick! So Kendrick is going to be hopping in the water, and we are going to be streaming live with the GoPro as he swims around to see how many different amazing things we can find just right here, we're right next to Brewers Bay. If you were to come to Brewers and go snorkeling, you would be, look at that, we're right here. It's so close. So these are things that are accessible to anybody. If you're not a swimmer, you can wade out. And a lot of this is just right within your reach. We have a beautiful, uh, ocean environment here and this is one of the ways that we are celebrating world ocean day and of course you guys can't see him right now but our favorite scientist joe is at the uh tech center and he is going to be working with mason to look at everything that kendrick finds in the water and we're going to be switching around our places in just a second but this is going to be so much fun. If you're watching live, throw some questions in the chat. Uh, any questions about what Kendrick finds as he's snorkeling around. And we're just going to have a really amazing time. So, you ready team? Yeah. All right. Kendrick can hop in. Mason, you're going to go to command center. And I'm going to come over behind the camera for the rest of today. And we're going to see some amazing stuff. Let's go. Ooh, and we're gonna get this. We're gonna go handheld. Now, as we switch over, we're just looking at Smush for a second. And I'm gonna go into the shade for the safety. Sorry about the shaking, guys. Ooh, okay. One moment. I'm gonna zoom out so we can see everybody. Say, hey, Joe. Heyo! So we're setting up our live camera right now. And Mason, do you want to get out of the sun and sit next to Joe? Because we don't want anybody getting sunburnt. And it looks like I can just and get these adjusted just right. And so we can see Kendrick getting ready to hop in, and he's going to grab the camera. All right, Hi. Kendrick, go ahead and hop in. All right, we see you. All right. really close guys sorry so I am also running the cords today so get ready to watch for see could it be awkward we're good there we go 
All right, so we're seeing right now. So basically, you see this all right? So right now we're swimming right beneath the the pier here, and you can see there's a bunch of these little silver sides. You'll see those a lot when you're snorkeling. Um, the real fun of those is, you know, what starts as a small fish brings a lot of these bigger fish. And so you see that very commonly. These are used as bait fish to bring in a lot bigger fish. So now we can see Kendrick is zooming in on what looks to be some some orange here. That is um, fire coral. Ooh. So interesting fact about fire coral. It's actually not what we consider kind of the other corals that we, we talk a lot about. It's, um, it's what's called a hydrozoan instead of an anthozoan. So anthozoans are like our brain corals, our, um, our star corals, our boulder corals. Hydrozoans, um, they have a different structure about them. They don't build as strong that rock structure, but they, they still create restructure and they're still important for fish. And fire coral, obviously, I think we, we all know why it's called that, because when you touch it, it feels like a hands on fire. But so. we're not going to touch it, right? Bless you. Excuse me. Yes, right. So you don't, and this is one of the reasons fire coral, among many, are one of the reasons you don't ever want to touch these things. In addition to hurting the corals and hurting the habitat, it can also hurt you sometimes. But so, Mason, looking at this, what are some of the things that you see here that, that's really kind of drawing your eye? Um, I see a lot of barnacles, and I see a lot of um, horizontal pieces of coral sticking out of the pillar. Right. So you've got stuff sticking out. out. And Right, so so corals and sponges, one of the reasons they're they're so important, we talk about this a lot. Um, seem to have lost our feed here. One second. Um, let's see if I can see. There we go. Now we're back. Um, so a lot of these things that are growing out here, this is really important for really small fish. Um, you know, fishes they're just learning, and you can see there's a cleaner. There we go. We've got a cleaner crab there. Cool. So these guys, you'll see them actually. Fish will come by them. Even bigger fish will come by just to kind of get little parasites off of them. Create so it's called a symbiotic relationship, right? Um, and so they're really important for the reef for supporting our bigger fish, like our groupers and our snappers. They all get cleaned at these stations by by those crabs. What else are you seeing? I see. I see anemones. Um, I think that's an anemone. Yeah, there's an uh, anemone or a, a feather duster worm, actually, is what those are. And they look like, have you ever seen the old feather dusters? Is it an anemone or is it your friend? <laughs> Sorry. They're closely related to anemones. They're not, they're not actually anemones. Anemones are actually very closely related to, to um, corals. Mm -hmm. These guys are, they're worms, they're, they're more like animals, but they're using those feathers as feed, filter feeding. So they're grabbing onto stuff in the water column. Now, a lot of this other stuff you're seeing here, we're not seeing a lot of coral. What we're seeing is a lot of sponge. I do see some sponge. I'm sorry, the, looks like the feed's hopping in and out here, but we are getting it still. Just, um, but yeah, so all of that color, that's all sponge. And what's this? <gasps> Is that, it's a couple of long spine sea urchins. <gasps> wow. Kendra, really can you, cool. can you turn around the pillar so we can see those? Get to the other side of the pillar. So you want to, you want to go over there and see if you can get closer to those sea urchins? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a really big treat because we're actually facing a major problem in, in the U.S. Virgin Islands and, and increasingly around the Caribbean where these urchins are experiencing some form of die off. We're still trying to figure out what exactly is going on. And in fact, a lot of research at the university is working on exactly that. So to see them here, uh, where we first started to see this die off occur, which is actually at Flat Key just offshore here. Can, can we zoom them. in? Oh, no, I can't see it. No, the runway's in the way. It's too flat. The, the flat <laughs> it's too flat. Is, flat Key is too flat to see from here, but it's, it's just on the other side of the runway there. So to see uh, healthy urchins here still, um, it's not only incredibly important because they're going to eat a lot of algae and help with this coral reef system, but to see them here, it's a sign that there is some health uh, in this reef area. So, we're going to get the feedback here. Can you tell them to get over by the urchins? Yeah, look! There. Yeah. That is something, we, d we don't see a lot of them anymore. And the urchins were something that was once incredibly abundant um, when we saw them at the, at the time. 
uh, and they're such important grazers. You, you think about them, they're, they're almost like, uh, you kind of think of them almost like, like cows or, or goats or sheep of the reef, right? Because mm. they, they eat everything in terms of Get algae. Too much algae, seagrass. let the goats out. Yeah, exactly. The, lo the lawn mowers, that's what, the that's the The lawn mowers of the sea. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Another thing you can see here, actually, you know, just at the base, you can see all of this seagrass that's here. Um, and a lot of this is actually was not here 10 years ago. This is what's Ooh. called um, Holophila stipulacea. I and mean, if you remember, on another science Saturday, we talked a little bit about it. It's we were right here. Sea seagrass, exactly. So we can get a little bit better look at it now. Um, and look, we have another, another little cleaner shrimp there, reef shrimp. He's hiding in there. You see those beautiful banded colors. These guys, they like to hide in that colorful sponge and they use that as shelter. Again, these guys are really important cleaners for the reef. What are the, um, they're like predators? What are uh, they hiding from exactly? Well, they have a lot of, um, uh, let's see, uh, it, it, other fish. So fish really can, can really like those, those little invertebrates. Um, they have it, they have a tough exoskeleton. So it's not going to be like the little fish that are going to pick them up, but little, the bigger fish. Think like, um, you know, sometimes it, maybe some snappers or things like that. Um, and then there's also other predators just that generally live on the reef, think like eels, right? Yeah. Um, so any, anything that's going to kind of be able to kind of crush that, that exoskeleton. But um, where they really thrive, again, is working as a, in that cleaner function. Let's see. I don't see if there's any questions in the chat. But if anyone has any questions or things that we want to take a closer look at, hey, Kendrick, can we take a look at the seagrass? See if you can dive down and get on that. Yeah. Great. See? Turtle grass, uh, manatee grass, are those so the same thing? I don't remember. Those are two different things. But this is what we call paddle grass or holophila stipulacea. You'll hear it called holophila a lot. So I like to call it falafel grass. <laughs> yeah, so we have manatee grass, turtle grass, right? Um, so this, uh, this grass, it's, it's very. Um, so it's invasive. It came actually from the Red Sea. It first invaded the Mediterranean. Um, and once it, once it arrived here, it, is, it has done a really good job of filling areas where previously there might have been other native seagrasses or in some cases where there wasn't seagrass at all. And this is kind of an interesting thing that scientists are still trying to fully understand exactly what is the role, what is this seagrass actually doing? Is it because some some points are showing that it's actually increasing the amount of seagrass we have. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Seagrass is important for things like blue carbon. It's important for sequestering um, you know, CO2 out of the atmosphere Ooh. and holding onto that. It's imp important habitat. Um, but is it replacing our native seagrasses, which our fish rely on for essential habitat, you know, especially when they're when they're very small. Um, We'll hopefully be able to do another Science Saturday where we are able to get down into the seagrass and you can see all the little tiny Ooh, fish that live there. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. What else have we got around here? I personally think the sponges are really cool. Sponges are some of the most diverse multicellular or diverse uh, animals that we have in the entire animal kingdom. Um, just because uh, they, they can have so many different forms to them. And so chances are, if you see something on the reef that you're not sure what it is, it's probably a sponge. What do they make sponges out of? Like, like the sponges we use? I mean, yeah, like the sponges. Sorry, I said that weird. Like, um, the sponges we use today are, they're like made out of, like, they're not made out of real sponges. But did they used to be made out of these? Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of history of sponge diving in like Italy. Uh, but you know what I think is really cool? And maybe this can be another Science Saturday. A common sponge that we still use uh, a lot in the Caribbean, but I've seen them for sale in the States, is... I forgot the name of it. Ugh, gasp. So there is a plant that grows and it's actually related. It's a type of gourd. And when it dries out and opens up it is a oh my goodness this is so embarrassing i can't remember a loofah a loofah a loofah is actually related to a cucumber oh yeah 
And so uh, you can buy those at the farmer's market if you go out to Bordeaux or the farmer's market on a Sunday morning in town. Um, I see those, um, those cleaner shrimp, the, the mantis shrimp are ooh. abandoned. But interesting, cool. yeah. right? And so, yes, so, so Mason, to get back to your question, is um, yes, these, these things relied on uh, sponges that, you know, we use sponges for, for cleaning materials, right? They're, they're very absorbent and they're porous. That's the biggest key for them. So speaking of things we can find right at our coastline, my constantly hungry nephew just reminded me that we have cypress lane along the coast. Smush, do you want to show that plant that you picked a little piece of? And what Kendrick's you... showing us some, some barnacles in the meantime. Ooh! That are just kind of growing on the underside of the dock there. Very cool, Kendrick. Um, but yeah, do you want to show the sea purse lane? Yeah. Um, it's very salty. It's very salty, it's yep. It's also tasty. And Grows right along the shoreline. And what vitamin does it have a lot of? A lot of C. A lot of vitamin C. Orange and just one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we eat it so that we don't get this scurvy. Do you want to um, go out to the reef there? So we do, in addition to growing right on the dock, there's a, I think we have a small kind of coral rock that we can go check out. Cool. We are putting to test our cord. So guys, just a little behind the scenes, this uh, long, blue cord that is very carefully being held by my feet um, because we're professionals is actually connected to the camera that Kendrick is taking out. So I'm holding it with my feet so that we don't crash down this amazing setup that Joe put together, the real brains behind Science Saturday. And so as Kendrick is snorkeling, he's actually connected to us Oh, there's a barracuda. What? Oh, nice. Yeah. <gasps> I love barracudas. Barracudas are my favorite fish. So barracuda are really important predators. That doesn't mean that they're mean necessarily. They do like to eat other fish and they do have, have very sharp teeth, but they can actually be really friendly and curious creatures. Um, oftentimes when we're doing diving for research, they'll swim right up to us just to see what we're doing. A lot of fish run away from us, but they just say, hey, what's going on? Um, and they're very important. So the, the more top predators we see, the, the sign of a healthier ecosystem we have. So it's really, really great to see, see one of those out here hanging out, just like the urchins. It's another mm -hmm. sign that, that we've got a, a fully functioning ecosystem right here under the water. Very cool. And we are so close to shore. Right, right. A again, this is, this is all things that if you're, if you're comfortable swimming, uh, you're comfortable snorkeling, you can, you can go out and you can find all of these things mm -hmm. right, right outside. Yeah, very cool. Another another place that's not necessarily right here at the dock because there is there is a lot of boat traffic here by the dock. But we want to be careful about that. That's why we got the special permission. But uh, here in Brewers Bay, there's some very incredible snorkeling I found. Um, just to the right of the beach, there's a lot of rocky, shallow shoreline. Mm -hmm. And um, over here, a place we call Range D as well. Um, it's really interesting snorkeling. I've seen dolphins right in here. You have? Yeah. Not up close, but from like a hundred feet. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's a safe way to they view came, wildlife. They came up to some lady on a paddle board, some tourist lady, and she screamed and fell off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dolphins can be, they can be very curious uh, creatures. We do want to wait on them to, like you said, uh, we wait on them to approach us. We don't, we don't want to go chasing after them. Um, and same with a lot of things we see here. Another very common sight in Brewers Bay, sea turtles. Mm -hmm. um, same thing, you know, we, we don't want to be chasing them, but sometimes they can be a little bit curious and they might come up to you. Um, that's perfectly okay. We don't want to touch them or anything like that, but just uh, letting them explore their environment, you know, can be a really cool experience, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we lost your other shot here. Can yeah. Come back. come back in here. I'll make some room. Nice try. So I think if we can, just because I was so interested in it, is if we can, I'll see... We'll test uh, Kendrick's breath holding abilities a little bit, and I'll see if he can maybe drop the camera down into the seagrass. Ooh, for a while. We yeah. can watch that for a little bit. We just actually drop it, and then. No, we, we have to test the 
All right. So Kendrick, uh, we want to get a good shot of the seagrass itself. Could you swim down and set the camera just in the seagrass, and then you can come back up? I think you can do it a little bit closer, maybe. just a meadow, right? Yeah. If you didn't know better, it just looks like an enchanted forest. Almost, like enchanted seagrass forest. Yeah, I mean, for... Like a Star Wars battlefield of yeah. some sort. <laughs> right, I mean, you know, for Space jungle. for these small fish and everything, they, they need all of that little shelter. And so some of our, our more native seagrasses, they're much bigger, and so they provide even more shelter, which is why they're more valuable. Um, but this is, you know, in areas where there wasn't any seagrass at all, that's pretty great to have. Mm -hmm. And scientists are still understanding what that means for, for seagrass um, in general. For example, things that graze on the seagrass, like our sea turtles. Oh, looks like we've got some tarpon. Woo. Can you swim over to the tarpon? Are they tarpon? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Tarpon are another one that can be very curious animals. They're very large, so that's why they're very popular for sport fishing. But they're, um, they're similar. They're kind of related to like carps. Um, so they don't generally provide a, a ton of uh, fish meat, so they're generally just for sport. Um, but they're very curious creatures and they, they like bugs. And so actually that's what, if, if you've ever put out like, um, if you're on a boat and you ever put out a light at night, they'll swim up to that because they're coming up to the light to see the bugs. Kendrick, did you hear something? I couldn't hear you. Cool. Looks like the tarpon swam off. Ah. But, um, Maybe we can, uh, hmm. what other things do you think we should explore? Hmm. There's all kinds of things in here. There's lots. Um, it's a beautiful day to snorkel. It is, you know, yeah. We, we've got a little bit of sun, a little bit of clouds. It makes me want to get in. You want to get in the water? <laughs> I know, Kendrick's having all the fun for us, huh? Uh, sometimes the best way to explore the ocean is just to get out there and swim around in it. So Kendrick's having all the fun for us right now. But um, I'm having a pretty amazing time <laughs> lounging up on the deck. Watching him. It's so much amazing wildlife. I love all the hues of the water from a distance. How like the distance is like dark, and then the ground is like or the ocean floor is a little green, and then the top is like lighter. That's something that's pretty incredible about here in the Virgin Islands. So oh, I, I just grew saw up a in turtle pop up. Sorry, yeah. Joe. Oh, you did. Well, if you could point Kendrick to it. Away. Might be too far away. Yeah. They do keep their distance. Um, but yeah, so I, I grew up in, in North Carolina, and we didn't have water anything like this. So to be able to experience this all of the time, it's something that's an incredibly valuable resource that we have here in the Virgin Islands. Absolutely. So, you know, wh whether you're comfortable swimming and snorkeling and even diving, or if you're just, you know, wading along the shore, there's so much to see. Really, really cool stuff. Gotta get out, enjoy our oceans, because World Oceans Day is actually every day. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. If it were up to me, this is what I would do every day. <laughs> Take a good swim. And I try to at least once a week, I think. Nice. You know? Good. Brewers is a great place. Uh, can you guys think of any, do you guys have any favorite snorkel spots to go um, to from shore? I like to snorkel Hull Bay. Hull I've Bay. seen some really fun stuff there. It is great. I've also seen an octopus just like snorkeling across along the rocks. Ooh. Hull Bay? Mm -hmm. Wow. So was long. this, what, were you snorkeling or was the octopus snorkeling? <laughs> I was. Okay. <laughs> They're pretty smart. And, some, and sometimes they'll actually come out of the water a little bit, you know. They don't like to. They like no. to stay in it. And of course, always Maho is a great place to see sea turtles. Maho Bay, mm -hmm. yeah, right, in St. John. That's true. I was thinking of St. Thomas locations, but there's all kinds of locations across the Virgin Islands. Uh, so, one of my favorite snorkels ever was with Joe on St. Croix. We did a night snorkel at the Frederickstead Pier. I've never done a night snorkel. It was we very cool. We each took about a couple lights, and so you have one that you can always have near you so that you know people know where you are, but then also you have one that you can shine on. And what's really cool about the reef environment is there's creatures that are out during the day and there's creatures that are out at night and they're totally different. Yeah. It's like a different world. But the, the Frederick Step here is really popular too on in um in St. Croix. 
Uh, Jack and Isaac's Bay is another popular St. Croix spot. Mm -hmm. Or Cane Bay. I think mm, it's my yeah. favorite spot for snorkeling, actually, in the whole Virgin Islands, in the U.S. Virgin Islands, is um, Christmas Cove. Christmas Ooh. Cove? Right from, like, the Yacht Club in Caput Bay. Is it because of the pizza? Pizza's good. <laughs> it's very good. But also, I just really love their, like, big rocks. I've just seen a lot of really cool things. There is, like, a spot... Um, yeah, there's just like rocks, and I've just seen a lot of cool things there. Like, Kendra's giving us a great shot yeah. of this rock right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some angel cool. fish. That was awesome. Very cool. Yeah, some angel fish. Yeah, so that's that um, in uh, Christmas Cove is where we see one of our, our native seagrass, the turtle grass, um, where it's, you know, very long uh, Thalassia testudinum. And we've got these silver sides hanging out with Kendrick. Very cool. They're having a, it looks like he's right in the middle of a bait ball. You can see him all flying around here. Yeah. We did have a comment from, from Susan Edwards. Loved seeing the tarpon. Ooh. Yeah, those are always pretty cool to see. They're they, very cool. They even snuck up on me a couple times when we were very doing some cool. research. And you turn around you're like, oh! There are a lot of them the whole day. Just like right around the dock because they're throwing things. And then there's like pieces of lobster and things like that and there's just some really great um there's a lot of tarpon and then also um actually i haven't seen a sea turtle a whole day in years mm. they're they're a little bit more harder to find these days mm -hmm. but they i have seen a couple further out when we we're doing some diving so i think um so now that we've seen all this I, i'm not seeing any any questions or any checkout spots in the chat i think maybe we'll just do one last swim and maybe we'll just go kind of under the dock, Kendrick, and just kind of go through the pillars here, and we'll just take one last look um, before we sign off. This is some of my favorite stuff to see. Uh, these beautiful sponges, you know, really in incredible organisms that can grow anywhere. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So as Kendrick is doing that last swim through, what are our final words on World Oceans Day and the importance of everything that we're seeing today? What do you think? Protecting the ocean is important, and yeah. I think maybe one thing to take away from everything that we're looking at today is that, well, oh, let me get this pulled back up here. Um, you know, all of this stuff, this is all near shore. It's, it's just the beginning. It's the very, very tippy top, the very surface of all that exists in our oceans. And it's connected to that. You know, we talk about our incredibly important coral reef ecosystems. A lot of those maybe aren't necessarily right along our shorelines, um, but they're intimately connected to these places, these places that are right here. Uh, a lot of those juvenile fish, they're starting in these seagrass beds. They're starting in, you know, hiding in these sponges and these small corals that, that are here, you know, right near the dock or on these rocks. This is where it starts. This is where all the life that we care about begins. Right. And think about how close that is to our actions on land. So, you know, when you're driving, if you're out exploring, you know, everything you see on land and everything we do on land washes down and affects the ocean. So we got to protect everything. You can celebrate World Oceans Day by doing things on land. Absolutely. Right? Not everyone has to be in the ocean to celebrate. Of course, it's an important way to celebrate, but... Um, you know, understanding how our near shore is connected to our offshore and understanding how that is even connected to um, what we do on land is one of the best ways we can celebrate World Oceans Day. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Well, I'll look one last time if there's any, any other questions. Um, but it looks like we've seen um, about everything we can see in our what's limited by our cable here. Right. Uh, obviously, the, more, the further around you swim, the more things you're going to find. And... Um, I think if I had to pick one last thing to maybe close out on was, Kendrick, if we could just one more time see those urchins. They're so important to our environment. It's so great to see them here. So we'll see if Kendrick looks like he's going on to a, an arrowhead crab or an arrow crab. And he, the cleaner crab's like, oh, maybe you're not a fish I can clean. <laughs> but if we get one last shot of the, those urchins, that would be really cool. All right. Well, everybody, as always, thank you so much for joining Science Saturday with us. 
Uh, for those of you who joined in live, we always appreciate you. And if you're watching this later, still type questions. We check back and you know we'll answer any questions you have as you're watching, whenever you're watching. A uh, huge shout out and thank you as always to Scientist Joe and Science Saturday intern. And today, Kendrick, thank you so much. Hey, Everybody have an excellent, beautiful day. Um, thank you all for joining. Thank you to our sponsors uh, run by the Department of Planning and Natural Resources. And of course, our equipment purchased by a grant from the Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands. You guys are amazing. And everyone enjoy the ocean no matter where you are. And thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye guys.